All right, so here's one of our examples from the textbook. Um, we have a woman with 100 feet worth of fencing, so I guess she's already gone to the store, that's how much she could afford. Um, so she has 100 feet worth of, worth of fencing, and she's trying to build an enclosure for her dog, right? Um, so she wants to give her dog room to run around, so she wants to make the area as large as possible. Um, and it just so happens that she's got a river on her property and the dog can't swim. So we have a sort of situation like this. We've got our sort of our river is here, right? Here's our property and we want to build our fence like this, right? And we'll treat this as a straight line for the purposes of this problem. Um, all right. So the, the previous example in the textbook dealt with was simply, you know, a rectangular fence. Turns out the best answer is a square fence. Uh, very similar to the problem we looked at where you just want to maximize the product of two numbers whose sum was 100, right? Um, you're trying to maximize the area of a rectangle given the perimeter. It's going to be a square. So typically what we do in these optimization problems is we want to break that symmetry because if, if, you know, if, if there's nothing in there to sort of break up the symmetry, the most symmetric answer is typically the best answer. Um, so what we do is we, we take away a side, right? So instead of fencing all four sides, we only fence three sides. Um, so that means that this 100 feet of fencing needs to be used for three of the four sides of the yard because the fourth side is bordered by the river, right? So, identifying quantities involved. Well, what are the quantities involved? We're trying to figure out the dimensions of the yards. So, maybe we call them x and y, right? The width and, and length of the yard. Okay, length times width gives us the area. That's what we're trying to do, right? Um, and what's the quantity to be, to be optimized? Well, we just said it. We want the largest area, right? So. The area we're trying to optimize is simply length times width, so x times y, right? And, and once again, we want to apply this constraint. And the constraint now is that we have 100 feet of fencing, right? So that's the other thing. It says what's constrained? Here's our constraint, 100 feet of fencing, right, giving us the perimeter. So that constraint looks something like this. 100 is equal to... Well, there are two sides, right? x plus x plus y. So 2x plus y, right? Um, one of the places where you can go wrong on these problems, mixing up the constraint with the thing that you're trying to optimize, right? Um, some people get mixed up because they just, you know, misremember formulas for things like area and perimeter. Um, generally, it's in, in a calculus course, you know, we probably don't expect you to remember all the exotic area and volume formulas for every possible shape, but typically area and perimeter of a rectangle is something we'll, we'll assume that you can come up with, right? Um, okay, so as usual in these optimization problems, right, you've got this relationship between the quantities, right? Um, and, and we've got, it. in fact, for optimization, you, you want two relationships. You want the constraint relationship and the sort of optimization relationship. Um, and in this case, what you do with the constraint, right, is you always use this constraint to eliminate one or more variables, right? So what we do here is we say, okay, well, let's solve for y. y is 100 minus 2x, okay? And if we make that substitution, then what we get is that area as a function of x is x times y, but y is 100 minus 2x. And we might say, okay, are there any um, restrictions on the domain here? Uh, well, we're talking about lengths, right? We're talking about distances. Distances can't be negative, right? Really, it can't be zero either, but including zero gives us a closed interval, which, which gives us a well-defined problem in terms of the extreme value theorem, right? So x has to be bigger than or equal to zero. What's the biggest that x can be? Well, 
Remember that x is, is one side here, and there have to be two such sides, right? And we only have 100 feet of fencing, so the biggest x could be is if y is equal to 0, and then 2x is 100, which gives us x equal to 50, right? So x has to be between 0 and 50. Now we've got that extreme value problem, just like we saw back in, in the previous chapter. Um, and, and as you might expect, if x is equal to either 0 or 50, the area is 0, right? When x is 50, y is 0. Um, so neither, neither endpoint gives us any area at all, so certainly not the maximum area, right? We want the largest possible area. So we go looking for a critical number. So 100x minus 2x squared, right? Makes it easier to take the derivative. What is the derivative? A prime is going to be 100 minus 4x. So 4 times 25 minus x. So a prime of 25 is 0. And again, this turns out to be our only critical number. Right? So since it's our only critical number, and we've already ruled out the endpoints, the max area has to be a of 25, okay, which is 25 times 50, okay, which is going to be, what is that, 1,250? And uh, I guess that's going to be in square feet. Okay, so that gives us our answer, right? Um, it might have asked for, for the dimensions, but you can see them here, right? X should be 25, Y should be 50. Um, that's what we want for the dimensions of our, of our yard in this case.